termites. It's episode 75. Shouldn't I get a present for that? Don't 75th episode? Does that matter? Probably not. Well, I do have a giant beer. <laughs> what am I drinking? I'm drinking Revolver, Bre- Revolver Brewing, a Texas ale that I picked up down there from Granbury, Texas, and I didn't know exactly the, where that was. Um, that's the front. Well, they both look like that. It's outside of Fort Worth. It's like southwest of Fort Worth, which I do love me some Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Not throwing shade on Dallas. No. I just that like Fort Worth isn't quite as crowded, and it has kind of that country, fe- that country western feel. But yet, very modern. Blood Ve- and honey ale. It's a blood and honey ale. Nice. It's really good. Yeah. Way to go, Granberry, Texas. And speaking of Texas, a lot of you termites gave me the heads up, but I already taped CBS Sunday morning show with <laughs> Jane Pauley. And why do I do that? Because Lewis Black loves his Sunday morning shows. And then he wants to talk about what was on them, and I never watch them. So then I just started recording them because I know he's going to go, did you see the thing and the thing and the thing? And I didn't because, um, as Lewis calls it, his old person shows. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, Jane Pauley, how old are the people doing the interviews? I mean, she's still great. She's still very good at it, so whatever. But on CBS Sunday Morning, I have not gotten to watch it because I just got back from down at the lake, hanging out with the old people. Couple hiccups with the old people. Oh, boy. How are they doing? They're fine. They're fine. Um, Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) um, (laughs) Yeah. They're fine. Um, But, yeah, I was uh, out out of pocket there for a little bit, so I haven't got to catch up on my shows, any shows, except I did catch up uh, with the my parents a couple episodes of Ozarks and I I just you know being in the Ozarks I can't wait till my parents start growing uh heroin that's that's <laughs> what I'm gonna make them do because we have a farm out in the woods I mean it's like a it's a meth road you go down our road it's a there's definitely some meth heads on the road that's why there's nothing of any value in our cabin <laughs> the one time they got methed up and they actually stole a shower curtain that was like gross it was like 100 years old my mom put it up there's a shower in the cabin just in case i mean i'm not spending the night there i know there's mice and shit i'm Uh not doing it but my dad would and my uncles will um yeah it's for deer hunting or whatever but um (laughs) i told my mom because the bottom of the two hills is cleared i see no reason that why don't we jump ahead of these meth heads and heroin come on a poppy field i told my mom google it you'll figure it out and then she showed me more of her arrowheads. And the only other person that appreciates her arrowheads as much as she does is who? The comedian Jeff Foxworthy, who spends much of his free time searching for arrowheads. And I sent him a picture of my mom's newest batch. And he identified one. He goes, that's a Dalton. It's 10,000 years old. I go, what? How do you? Nerds. They are lovely, lovely. Uh, but Jeff's not a nerd. My mom's kind of out there in everything. Jeff... Jeff's a hunter, fisher, normal human Crazy. being. Mm-hmm. He just has that weird hobby, which I think is fun too. Like I found round, rock, round rocks out at the farm that are from a meteorite that hit, and they're perfectly round rocks. They look like cannonballs, but they're not. They somehow when they you got to Google it, and it gets very hard with science. I don't understand, but the heat or something, and then they turn into round rocks. And there, if you Google Missouri round rocks, it's really a thing. And I have found three on my own, and it's very exciting when what? you find one. Put Missouri Red Rocks in the show notes. <laughs> so I did the Ozark thing. I'll tell you what, they I know it was probably because of COVID and stuff, so I'm not gonna um bust them up for waiting too long in between seasons. But when you get back into it, you have to just take that. Me and my friend Brian Dorfman were saying it's Ozark has kind of jumped the shark last season. Yeah. I mean, this was just supposed to be a normal family in the suburbs, and now they're Drug lords, they're with Mexican cartels. The children know how to launder money in foreign <laughs> nations, you know, and they have the money to buy the computers. It, it's just all. But once you take that leap of faith okay. and keep going, then I had to watch, me and my mom watch three in a row because then you're into it and you want to know. So I got to finish that up. But today, I'll just, free, full disclosure, is a Sunday and it's a football Sunday. <laughs> Kansas City, my nephew Jack. He's at the game. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, my brother-in-law took him. A lot of people I know are at the Chiefs game. It's going to be about 44. By the time you guys hear it, it'll be over, so I won't go into it. But 
Um, it's going to be a nice day in Kansas City. And then my nephew, he's super um, anal, like, with his stuff, unlike the girls, the twins. It's just a shit show. But Jack's super anal, and he hates being late. And Matt said they were leaving Jeff City, which is also in Ozark. I get very excited when they have local things. I'm like, oh, look, they showed Jeff City. They showed the aerial view, the capital of Missouri. Um, and, but I saw on Good Morning Football, I think they opened the gates at 10. And those two guys maybe might have been pulling up at 10, but that line started at 7. Jack's going to actually spontaneously combust and go, we're late. I told you we should have left when it was dark. God dang it. Dad, we're late. He's, that's not going to, that is not going to go easy with the nephew who likes to be on time. And I'm with him. I am an on-time person always because I got left a lot as a child. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was always the last one to get my dad rock up in a Thunderbird smoking a cig. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm like, God, Dad. I mean, at some point, the nuns come out and go, Does, is anyone getting you? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he's coming. Or my mom would rock up in that eight-cylinder Maverick smoking a cool, get in. <laughs> anyway, um, so many things, all right? That's what I'm drinking. Let's go over a couple termites sent me very nice things. Um, some ranch socks. Very excited about that. This is from uh, Kathy. In New Jersey. And then she sent me this card where she, it's just a blank card I can use. It's not written in because she typed in the letter. She said this painting, for those of you who YouTube can see it, um, was done by a former student of my husband's who's, who has cerebral palsy. He paints with a head stick. Look at that. Wow. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. My friend Josh Blue has cerebral palsy, the comedian. He's very, very funny. Um... But sometimes his cerebral palsy, sometimes I'm like, um, dude, I don't know if you're just super drunk or if this is the palsy <laughs> acting up. <laughs> but we laugh about it, and he laughs about it. And he's really a funny comedian. Josh is super funny because he doesn't just re uh, rely on palsy jokes, and then that sounds like we're all super mean as comedians. We're like, hey, man, don't just go for the handicap thing every time, okay? <laughs> But he doesn't. He has funny cerebral palsy jokes, but he also has a lot of really great just joke jokes that aren't uh, all tied in with that. So thank you for the socks. Those are great. Kathy, and then this this termite from the desk of a worthy termite. Oh, I love it. That's what it says. Yeah, nice. Sherry. Yeah. Sherry sent me a bunch of books, which is really nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I really, really like it because, because of story time. I don't know if I'll have time for story time again. You never know. Maybe we'll all get sent back to our... Our desk and have nothing to do. Julie Andrews, oh, uh, yeah, nice. I would can't, and Carol Burnett. I can't wait to read that either. I've never read. There's a bunch more, but these are my two favorites out of the pile. So thank you very much for that. We'll set those there. That must have weighed a lot. Speaking of termites, before I get into what, well, we'll do what we're eating first. Okay, this is so exciting. You know, I love gummy bears. Yes. Yeah, because my mom, when I was driving, I had the one, the travel ones for my friend Kathy, and I had thrown a bunch around the car, and my mom saw them, and she's like, um, what's going on in here? I go, those are travel hair moves. I ate them all. That's why I can't be given a whole bag. I would eat them. But look at this, because it is um, the anniversary. It's 100th anniversary. It's, yes, they have limited party time hats, oh, gummy cool. bears. But I kept looking at the bears. I'm like, well, they don't have hats on. They're not supposed to. The hats are separate. They're like this. They look like little triangles. I'll take a picture and put it on Instagram. What's your favorite uh, flavor? Red. 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 And then that clear. Otherwise known as cherry. Yeah, but they don't taste like traditional flavors. I love the clear and the orange. I hate the green. I've never had blue. Well, here, I'll taste it. I'll eat a blue hat. They're hard to chew with temporary crowns on. My <laughs> dentist would kill me. Teeth? Oh my God. Miss, I'm down two teeth. I got to call that guy and see if my teeth are in. <laughs> I know, I one way back here, and then a temporary crown's back there. Well done. Um, the blue is pretty good. I can't really identify it. Just sweet. Like kind of, yeah. yeah. No, this is not for me. I'm going to give it to my mom. Twix salted caramel. I'm going to start that debate. Do you say caramel or caramel? Caramel. Caramel. Um, wow. 
Well, don't. Oh, it's salt. Don't all of them have caramel in them? Yeah, but not caramel. This is supposed to be. I don't like it. I can tell by your face. And I like Twix. <laughs> no, that's too much. They fucked it up. No. Have some beer. Yeah. I will. That's why you got a beer shaker. I know. It's my palate cleanser, if now you let will. Me dump something green in here. <laughs> this is creamy avocado ranch from where? The Zitaco Bell. I do too. I stopped on the way down the lake. Did you? Mm hmm. Same order every time. Too soft tacos, Diet Coke. Um, all right, creamy avocado ranch sauce. 110 calories per two teaspoons. What do they use this avocado sauce for? Avocado ranch for? I don't know. Wow. Good. It's great. Um, I don't like avocado all mushed up on sandwiches. The texture's terrible. Do you like guac? I like a regular avocado that you cut up. Do you like guac? Guac's all right for a bite or two. But I don't... Who wants all that squishy shit on a sandwich? Me. Ugh. Yes. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I have a texture issue. Yeah, well, I'm very aware of. It's been made <laughs> overly clear to me mm-hmm. that it's not normal. No. All right. So, so that's what we tasted. Like I would recommend this, though, if you see it in the grocery store. Avocado Ranch. Good for any party. Super Bowl, anything. All right. <laughs> now, that you want to talk about awesome termites? Yeah. I think this is the coolest thing I've ever seen termites do. Okay. Cool. Dear Kathleen Ann Paddles, you got a shout out to. Oh, this hey. is from a Wisconsin termite, Thanks. Kelly. And I'm going to say her last name because she, you know what? It's in the article. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Mould. M-O-U-L-D. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for your dedication. Your commentary on Brittany inspired an idea to write an article that a colleague and I did this past fall, and it became a cover story for a Wisconsin lawyer magazine and thought you might enjoy seeing it. Have a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year. Blah, blah, blah. I've had this for a minute. I just keep forgetting to bring it up stairs. But this is Wisconsin lawyer, and I read the article. It's like a five-page legal thing about conservatorships. And how do you, you know, because I always think this is really a leap. But I loved, one time I went to the Mary Todd Lincoln house. Uh-huh. And I believe it's in Lexington. Might have been Louisville. I don't know, it's in Kentucky. And I just stumbled upon it, taking a walk. And I went in and uh, I had read that Mary Todd Lincoln was crazy. Mm-hmm. At times. Probably back in the day, undiagnosed, bipolar, mm-hmm. manic, definitely manic. Like, yeah, manic episodes. But her son, back then you could just throw women in psych wards. Well, all the way up to like the 70s, I think. Right. Anybody that was married could just, or if you were the son, I don't know if a daughter could do it. But, and it was so funny because when I said to the lady at the Mary, the Mary Todd Lincoln house, that lady was a, very serious person, and I said, uh, hey, I heard <laughs> stuff I read said Mary Todd was a little, you know, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and she, <laughs> she said, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but those things won't be discussed on this tour. Oh, my God. Oh, smack. Ooh. I'm surprised I got to stay. But then when I was talking to my dad about Brittany, mm-hmm. and I think I may have mentioned it because my dad's a lawyer, and th- so this is the article, Free Brittany. But what's crazy is it's so well done. Her and her uh, work colleague, Kate Trudell. um, That's really cool. They knocked this shit out of the park. Every state is very different because my dad dad always prefaces stuff when I go, hey, man, can you just do this to Brittany if you're the dad or whatever? He goes, "Uh, once again, Kathleen, I'm not familiar with California state law. (laughs) Uh, He goes, but. In Missouri, and then I said, is it different in every state? He said, it's drastically different in every state. So I'm not going to read this article because there's only so many people that would, you know, it would have anything to do with them in Wisconsin. Um, But it is extremely interesting. You should, especially if you think you're half-ass crazy, look up your state laws on guardianships and conservatives, so so, conservatorships, so that nobody can throw your ass in, in one. Right. Like, mostly... It was intended uh, in the beginning for super crazy people or old people. Like if 
my parents get old enough and they can't sign their checks anymore and they yeah. can't take care of themselves, blah, blah, blah. But I thought, that is this pub dad, pubcast turning a crazy idea and then we get two smarties. I like it. Boom. Yeah. And they do something. If So if you're in Wisconsin and you're wondering, like, um, what's the deal mm -hmm. on my parents or, or say you have a relative that's, like, I don't understand, like, the kid from Aurora, for instance, the mm -hmm. shooter, oh the parents God. said, you know, we know he's, he was out of control, not right in the head. But the question is, when they're 18, what do you do? He's right. an adult. I mean, right. anyway, I just thought this was really taking what I kept making it. I wasn't joking. I mean, it's real, free Britney. Um, but somebody actually did something other than <laughs> the children who make their T-shirts, which is fine. Right. And it helped Britney, if that's our goal. So that was very cool. That's awesome. Yes. Then on the road, now, um, my dad's dog fucking sat on this, disappointing me. I found USA Today on the road, the actual newspaper. Oh, cool. I did not know it even existed. I thought we stopped that. Probably and it made me very sad because I used okay. to love their sports page mm -hmm. because on the inside they would tell you every sport that was on TV, what channel, and what time, and it was very well organized. So I'm so sick. Like, if you Google... What time is the game on? I mean, forget it. This is nine million things. <laughs> but I also like, what on the back page of the money section, they used to go state by state. Every single state gets a paragraph of what's going on. Oh, well, that's fun. Yeah, and I just like to pick around, see the state I was in, like what's going on. Okay, here's just an example. This is why it made me laugh so hard. Um, let's say New Jersey. Governor Phil Murphy has tapped Sarah Elderman, the acting head of the State Department of Human Resources has become the commis commissioner of the agency. Okay, that's normal. Yep. Sure. Um, uh, West Virginia. Signaling an eagerness to diversify its energy office in coal-dependent West Virginia would eliminate a ban on nuclear power plants under a bill that passed the Senate on Tuesday. That's normal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do one more normal one. Okay. How about, let's go, Idaho. Lieutenant Governor Janice... McGinchin asked legislative um, budget writers for $29,000 in taxpayer money to cover legal fees incurred after she lost a public records lawsuit. Okay. Here's Missouri's. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eastern Missouri prosecutors have refiled a felony terrorist threat charge against a man accused of live streaming bomb threats of live streaming threats to bomb and kill people while he was dressed as the Batman villain known as the Joker. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, this is why I love my state. Like this is what we're like, are you shit me? Right. There's some guy dressed up as the Joker <laughs> saying he's going to bomb shit. Well, yeah, we got to take care of that. Wow. So that made me laugh really, really hard. <clears throat> I mean, you have to take it seriously. Speaking of Missouri. Speaking of Missouri. In, uh, Go Chiefs. In Ozark, we were talking about Missouri versus Missouri. Mm. Let me explain that. Well, I can't get too picky and critical. First of all, when you see those pine trees in the show Ozark, that is not shot at the Lake of the Ozarks. They did the aerials of Lake of the Ozarks, but somehow we as a state messed up and didn't get what they wanted. So they went down. I'm, I'm sure it's Lake Lanier. It's definitely Georgia. There are pine trees everywhere. There's not a pine tree in Missouri. And then there's just little tiny, like Ruthie has the perfect rural accent. It's not Southern. It's just rural. Rural Missouri. Rural Missouri. Yeah, she could be Southern, but the they bring in this guy as a lawyer, but he sounds like he's from Chicago, and he says Missouri. Nobody north says Missouri, Missouri, where they go out. You know, I, I live down in southern Missouri. That's southern Missouri. That's the boot heel. That is northern Arkansas. Anything north of St. Louis or north, it's Missouri. Kansas City. And then East Coast people call it Missouri. I, I think they get confused because it's Mizzou, so they just throw Z's in there. I'm like, no, 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 not Missouri. 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 Not misery, although that's always funny. Um, Missouri, but yeah, this, I'm like, somebody needed to correct that guy on the set. Mm -hmm. You don't sound like a Southern. You, you don't even have a rural accent. You wouldn't say Missouri. Yeah. 
this just nitpicking though. It's a good show. It's fun. Jason Bateman's always great. I love uh what's her name? Laura Linney. Yeah. They're all great. It's just um you know any rule America couldn't go this far. No. When the children start money laundering in 650 nations, I'm like, like whatever the accounts yeah. and and the way they talk to their parents. Every time that kid says something, I go, kick him out. <laughs> kick him out. Forever. Don't. I'd kick him out. I don't care if it's my fault he's like that or not. You're out. I can't stand you, you little bastard. I can't listen to this disobedience and this defiance of my authority. Hi! As Cartman would say. Um, what's going on with the Queens? Well, Tanya's back out on tour. Yep. She's doing gigs. So if you want to find Tanya... The hip seems to have been work. She has brand new hip, ready to swing it like Elvis. Um, Dolly has a new Southern baking uh, mix. Southern baking mix. She went with uh, Duncan Hines. This lady never stops. I get tired on her behalf. Sometimes I'm going to say I'll say I'm going to take a nap on Dolly Parton's behalf because I know she won't. Take um, uh, she has um, collaborated with uh, Duncan Hines. And it's icings and cake things, collections of coconut and banana cake mixes. I hate coconut, but I do love banana. Two kinds of buttercream frosting and accessories, including recipe cards, dropped on the company's website. They sold out before noon, but you can sign up if you want to get Duncan. I do. I did like Duncan Heights. My mom used to get the icing in the can. And it's good. It's very yeah, good. It's yeah. Good. Can I lick the can? That was one. Not just lick the bowl. Can we lick the cat? Yeah. The, the Duncan Hines is very exciting to be uh, partnering with her. So there you have it, termites. If you want that, get online. Update! I can honestly say I'm not sure this is an update. I don't know if this podcast was started when Tiger King was on. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, the pandemic. Huh? The pandemic. Yeah, but I don't know. I think the Tiger King had already come and gone. I don't even know that we talked about it. But for those of you people that watch Tiger King, this is an update. <laughs> Um, my, my accountant in the Ozarks knows him. No. I don't want to brag. Oh, also, oh my God. Well, I think I'll get to that. Yes, I'll get to that. So many Ozark updates of just <laughs> hanging out all last week down there. Um, he was once the owner of some large, some 70 large cats at a controversial park in Oklahoma and his antics gripped next Netflix viewers who turned in to watch him in droves. Now, Niger, Tiger King, Joe Exotic has been resentenced to 21 years behind bars for his... He tried to get a resentencing, and he did, and the judge... But he cut it by one year. He was given a one... Cuts it by one year since 2020 when he was first convicted. He's always denied the crime. However, a secretly recorded meeting showed the colorful former exotic zoo manager, whose real name is Joseph Malinaldo Passage, offering 10 grand to an undercover, gov undercover government agent to kill Carol Baskin, who we all think killed the yeah, husband. Russian. Yeah, I don't trust that lady. She owns the Florida Animal Sanctuary. I mean, <laughs> I can't be sued for that. I'm just saying. I don't know. He allegedly instructed the agents to cap her and drive off during the December 2017 meeting. He said he didn't make meant for that to be taken seriously. He continues to harbor intense feelings of ill will towards me, said Carol Baskin. <laughs> right. Nice. Yeah. Um, but he also has cancer. Some sort of aggressive sort of cancer. He was hoping to go home, but uh, aggressive prostate cancer. A prostate cancer is um, one of the treatable ones. I'm sure you'll be fine. I just said that having no medical knowledge at all. Update! Oh, so what did we say, termites? What did I tell you about Adele? You do not mess with the casinos. No. One rule. If you ever want to work in Las Vegas or Atlantic City, maybe Reno, I'd throw in the bucket. Just for fun, because they're connected. They're all, well, Reno and Vegas are some of the owners' own casinos in both Atlantic City. It might be its own separate animal, but they all operate the same in the same kind of uh, way. And sometimes, if you behave like this lady does, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Yeah. But if you don't behave, they're not. They don't take it personally enough, and I understand why. They're there to make money, and. They don't have time for, like, the people that work at the Mirage, for instance. I am actually very good friends with those people, but they're not the owners of the right. property. And the MG5. I've worked every casino in Vegas, and the only rule is do what they say. If they say do 45 minutes, do 44.59. Right. 
right. and get yeah. your ass off the stage. They have reasons for all that shit. It is not yours to question. And I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Pay me. Put some Diet Coke and beers backstage. <laughs> Mama Termite is Don't happy. Happy. <laughs> yeah. So what did I tell you? We went through a bunch, termites, paddles, contributive, of who might take her gig. Yeah. Keith Urban. Mm-hmm. We said one of them country guys. You thought Garth Brooks, and that was a great guess because he <laughs> loves the press of being the savior. Uh-huh. And then he'd get a bunch of, yeah, whatever. But it's still a good show. He's a good performer, you yeah. know, if you're into it. Um, Adele, uh, they got Keith Urban. And guess what, Adele? You know, I hate to say it. Your shit is already out back. Right. In 24 hours, your crap. And guess what's in the gift shop now? Keith Urban t-shirts. Vegas don't fuck around. No. They don't care either. (laughs) So now there's all these reports that she told Caesars to change their sound system. Oh. Yeah. First of all, now I'm not a singer. But I am always amazed when I go in any, especially from being on the road and doing a million theaters, and then half the time I end up, if I ever, if I, if I ever argue with someone, mm-hmm. it's the sound guy or yeah. lady. Usually, because yeah. they'll go, well, it sounds really good out here. Yeah, well, I'm the one that gets to decide. <laughs> Guess who does this every night? Right here. This lady. Because um, I always want them to turn it up. And then they're always like, oh, we really feel like we're, blah, 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 blah. oh, my God, can you just, what do you care? Right. Just turn it up. But anyway. I don't ever, I'm always amazed in Vegas, even in the comedy clubs in Vegas. Like now, like I'm in the bigger, you know, the fancy pants showrooms where there's 1,400 seats, but even a comedy club, the improv, for instance, at Harris, the old uh-huh. improv. I was amazed at the sound because it was so awesome. Mm-hmm. Vegas doesn't fuck around with that. Yeah. So I don't know what she thought was wrong. I'm not a singer. Maybe it's entirely different, but I don't, they were going to accommodate that. That's like a big deal. Yeah. Um, So they were going to switch all of it out. Yeah. It was something called a Meyer sound system. Shows you how much I know. I don't even know what they're called. I just want to know if it's on. Um, (laughs) She was displeased with the set design, particularly over a swimming pool erected in the middle of the stage. Uh, Sources say she had multiple bones of contention about the show, including but not limited to the choir and the sound system. She wanted the Caesars Coliseum, Seinfeld works there, and Chuck, my friend, opens for him sometimes, Mm -hmm. and Chuck said it's amazing. The Caesars Coliseum allegedly already completed, revamped its, completely revamped its sound system system because Adele objected to the Meyer system it was previously using. Now they're saying to keep going that it's a breakup with her boyfriend, that something's Mm -hmm. going on with that sports agent guy, and that she was crying in between in rehearsals and then taking calls and crying. And you know what? I really like her music and I really hope she gets her shit together. But if you go to the Cher show, I expect an extravaganza. Yeah. Because it's Cher. Right. Um, But if I went to see Celine Dion, I wouldn't expect, just sing. That's what you do. Cher's a performer. Mm -hmm. Adele, you always stood there and sang. There was nothing else going on. Not swimming pools on stage. Then she thought swimming it looked like, pools. yeah, there was. And then no. she's like, it looked like a filthy pond. So she wanted that gone. It's, you're not, oh, you're not the show, oh. You're not, just go sing. I don't know how people, even Barry Manilow, he, his show was great, but he would have done it with just a piano if he had to. Right. He'd like to change his outfits if possible. Yeah. Yes. And he should. He's a show. <laughs> so that's the latest. Now, Keith Urban is doing March and April. They didn't say he was doing February. I'm just throwing this out there, Caesars. I have one Saturday off. (laughs) I certainly could fly on Friday. Right. No problem. (laughs) It's the 19th. See you there. They're not going to put me in there. Maybe with somebody, though. How about me and Ron? Yeah. Two of us? Yeah. Yeah. He's available. He's available, yeah. I know why he's available, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Update. This is a long time ago, too. This is great. Netflix will have to face Queen's Gambit defamation suit. Judge rules. Oh. Everybody remember Queen's Gambit? Yep. And they, they had the lady that they were featuring, mm-hmm. and they said that she had never played a man, and they also said she was Russian. Wrong and wrong. Mm-hmm. 
Well, unfortunately for them, the real lady is alive. Yep. And she had already played umpteen men, and she's Georgian. So that's, yep, here we go. Netflix is learning that careless, careless dialogue in its fictional shows can have serious implications. Its bid to get a recent defamation suit dismissed has been rejected, meaning it will have to face the plaintiff, Georgian chess player Nona Gaparindashvili. That was really bad. Yeah, it was real bad. I know. It's okay, though. I don't have time to practice. No, this isn't don't. a play. No. This is live on the spot. Mm-hmm. Let's just call her Nona for, for her. Nona. She, well, we don't, Nona Gap. No Gap. Gap Rindashvili. Gap Rindashvili. Gap Rindashvili. <laughs> and I have got to say with. In September, she filed a suit against a streaming giant accusing the company of defamation and false light invasion of privacy. I don't know what that means. As the world's first female grandmaster. Known as mentioned in the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit, a period drama about a chess, chess prodigy. In one scene during a chess match, a radio commentator says in passing, the only unusual thing about her really is her sex, and that's not even unique in Russia. There, there's Nona Gaps in Dishvili, but she's the female world champion and has never faced men. Okay. So she's not Russian, and it's bullshit. And if I'm that lady... And I'm watching this. I'm like, that's not true. Right. I played all kinds of dudes. According to the suit, not only is the allegation um, that Nona hadn't faced men at the time man- manifestly false, it's also grossly sexist and belittling. It states that by 1968, the year in which the episode is set, she had com- she had completed at least 59 ma- competed against 59 guys, oh, wow. 20, 28 of them simultaneously in one game, including at least 10 grandmasters at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, the show is based on a novel. Ba ba ba. They said, you can't just make shit up like that because you're using a real person and then you're fictionalizing it. Right. Um, she wants $5 million as well for Netflix to remove the statement that she never played men from the show. How hard is that, Netflix? Right. Give her $5 million. Yeah. Do it. How much are you going to spend on lawyers? And you know what? She deserves it. Right. That's horse shit. I'm rooting for Nona. <laughs> Team Nona. Team Nona. <laughs> make t-shirts that no one would buy. <laughs> you're like, what is that? It doesn't have the free Britney excitement. No. 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 <laughs> update. Oh, I just told me updates this week. This was so exciting. So do we all remember the gun, gun-toting gun couple in St. Louis yes. that was afraid of the, quote, black mob, mm-hmm. which was a lot of kids and just black people. Mm-hmm. They were just walking down the street. Uh, well, and then she had on the black and white shirt, like the hamburger that had mustard on it, and they came out of their Central West End mansion, guns blazing, and AR-15, and they're both lawyers. And if you read about them as neighbors, they're they're not good time Charlies. Right. They sue everybody. Oh, yeah. Well, I saw them. Yes. No. Yep. And posted a picture of it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. He rocks up. He's running for Senate now. Oh, and my in my opinion, no. it's just a money grab. Donate, 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 donate. And then he, you know, whatever. It's also, he thinks he's popular. I'm sure he likes being popular because these two, he clearly hasn't been popular uh, enough to go get pants that fit. Remember his pants? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, dude, those were like 10 years ago. Um. Anyway, he rocked up in uh, mid-Missouri. I don't need to say exactly where, but I posted a picture. He rocks up in a, G- uh, in a ca- Cadillac, the, what's the? Escort. Escalate. And the, the front tire is either a spare or someone has stolen his hubcap. <laughs> and then I see him from a building and they're walking down the street doing something in Columbia. But this is where, this is interesting because this is so old school bullshit racism that <laughs> this, I never understood this. How can you make public streets private? Never understood it. Right. I don't understand at Pebble Beach why you have to pay $10 to drive out to, to see Pebble Beach. Right. I still don't understand it. I do it, but I, don't, I think it's bullshit. But that's just the Irish part of me that goes, it's bullshit, and I don't really have any reason. Not to, I just don't like it. This is interesting, though. First of all, not if you're not from St. Louis, the Central West End is a beautiful area, tons of beautiful homes. One of the homes from Meet Me in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Forest Park is down there. But as there are surrounding neighborhoods that are quite dangerous, high in crime, and more black people than white people. So the white, rich white people want to go in this enclave mm-hmm. 
knowing that you you're you're going to be in an area that's high crime, mm -hmm. and that's on you. Um, I would have no problem with it, but I also wouldn't feel that I needed to be have you know uh, like these kind of weapons and stuff right. like it's just. But this is how it happened. I just can't believe this happened. If you were in St. Louis and wanted hypothetically to eat the rich, one Portland place would be a good place to start. The limestone and marble palazzo found at the address looms high above the hedge fringe retaining walls lining King's Highway, a major north and south thoroughfare where the cars stream by at all, or all hours of the day. But between the busy road and this street, is punctuated with opulent homes, is an imposing stone entrance way with wrought iron gates, one of the many structures St. Louis has built through its history to divide its communities. I never understood either. Once you start putting yourself behind a gate, you're imprisoning yourself. Right. Like, so what, you're going to get in your car and leave your gated thing and then go to wherever you're going and then come back and ne never go in the actual community? Yeah. Like, anyway, it's interesting. Designed in 1909, this is the house they're in. Oh, wow. They're all from the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they're beautiful. I mean, the 15 rooms, they're like... It's like the Sound of Music Houses or something. It really was. The, they really did film me. Yeah. Designed in 1909, the 18,000 square foot mansion, this is where the Hamburglar lives, was a wedding present for Anna Bush, daughter of beer magnet Adolphus Bush, whose name adorns the city's ballpark. The mansion was purchased in 1988 by its cur current residents, Mark and Patri Patricia McCloskey Hamburglers. A personal <laughs> injury... <laughs> They are personal injury attorneys whose office is located in another mansion they own, a 15-minute walk away, which I guarantee you they're not walking. No. In a splashy St. Louis magazine feature, the McClossies detail their difficult journey, two-decade journey to restore one Portland's place, marble staircases and silk walls. Silk walls! Oh Some God. of them which required traveling to Italy to see the original Renaissance-era palaces that the home was modeled after. None of this is necessary. No. You, they'll send a video. You don't need to go. The surrounding Central West End neighborhood is known for its lavish houses, well-groomed residents. Wow. I never thought about that. Well are you referring to the gay men? <laughs> mm? They certainly are. That's a very strange thing to write. <laughs> well-groomed resident and manicured. But on Sunday evening, the occupants of one Portland place were pacing on their front lawn in bare feet and mustard-stained shirts, brandishing firearms, which they pointed at hundreds of Black Lives Matter protesters streaming down the sidewalk. The protesters weren't there to see the McCloskeys. They were just cutting through on Portland place on the way to the home of Mayor Lydia Krusen, who on Friday publicly read a list of name and addresses of... Uh, 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 wait, I keep going. Oh, yeah, okay. So she owns a house in the Central West End too, a brownstone. They both have houses. She listed the names and addresses of people that wanted to defund the police department. So oh, I don't know about that. By taking by taking this this street became a symbolic moment in itself as the protester toppled the century-old roadblocks intended to keep St. Louis's white rolling class separated from the rest of the city. <laughs> Although videos show protesters walking through an open gate, which appears undamaged. Right. I think they just opened it. Yeah. And when we're, let's cut through here. Right. Like, I wouldn't think you could own a street. I would just think these people put up gates because they're scared shitless of us. Right. The rest of us mm -hmm. that aren't bazillionaires and... Well, McClowski told uh, the news that protesters had smashed through the historic rod iron gates of Portland Place, destroying them, rushed towards my home where my family was having dinner outside and put us in fear of our lives. Dogs. Private property, <laughs> get out, Mark yelled at the protesters, emerging from between two-story white pillars and cradling an AR-15 assault rifle. As the crowd began to call in response, Whose streets are streets? And somebody yelled, it's a public street, asshole. Somebody, <laughs> somebody else yelled, we're on the sidewalk. This is all private property, he yelled, the hamburger, his husband. <laughs> there are no public sidewalks or public streets. We were told that we would be killed, our home would be burned, and our dog killed. We were all alone facing an angry mob. They're not coming from you. No. They're not coming for you, chubby. <laughs> They're trying to get to where they need to be going, and you just happen to have the, the easiest cut through. Private streets remain a, a stubborn relic of St. Louis's Gilded Age. Homeowners paid for streets and sidewalks to be paved long before the surrounding arteries were maintained by the city. In doing so, they purportedly reserved the authority to decide who could use them. Wow. 
Yep. Which, according to an 1895 story in the St. Louis Republic, was a privilege, not a right. Whether they still functionally or symbolically shut people out, one can easily... This is the other thing. You can still get on the streets a different way. The wrought iron gates are on one side, but the other ends are open. Oh. Yeah. One can easily enter Portland Place just around the corner from the gates. The ornate gates, guard towers, black powdered coated signs denoting private street in gold embossed serif type dot the St. Louis urban landscape as a reminder of these restrictions. A revitalized movement to limit, limit access to St. Louis's streets emerged during the 1970s and the 80s with the population of the city dwindling to half of what it had been in the 50s, largely because white families moved to the surrounding suburbs. By the time such and such left, bah, 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 they're trying to get, a, they're trying to undo it. Um, there's another street-level um, delineation that keeps the Central West and exclusive. Delmar Boulevard, the East Artery West, blah, 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 creates a barrier known as the Delmar Divide that has slices through the city. Historically, no, neighborhoods north of Delmar were redlined because they were home to predominantly black communities, while white families to the south received federal loans to buy or improve property. So the white families got wow. loans. Right. Funneling oh government God. capital directly to the renovation of those mansions. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we should have renovated the mansions. Right. But you don't just... Uh, it's wow. so imbalanced. Yeah. Oh, my God. The economic disparities are firmly entrenched. On Portland, uh, one on Portland Place, an 1891 Queen and Victorian is on the market for $1.4 million. A few blocks to the north, on the other side of Delmore, a six-bedroom home built four years later is, say, on, is <laughs> selling for $54,000. No. Yep. Oh, my God. So that's what's up with the um, Hamburglar. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> um a hamburger and her husband. See if he wins. Wow. Yeah, see if he... Um, Good people. Um, what I gonna keep that one. Okay, we're moving on. To holy shit, they found it! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Now, some of the termites sent me this. I love that a lot of you termites already know what I would be interested. Like, we have formed this relationship <laughs> well enough to know that I like weird things. So, um, not too hard of things. This is so... This is literally amazing. Archaeologists have unearthed a flawless Roman blue glass bowl in the Dutch city. I'm not going to say this right either. Namagan. Namagan. Do they say J's? Jasper Parnovic. Like they say, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just thinking Jasper Part, the golfer. So, the young men, I don't, whatever. <laughs> it's Dutch city. So hang on. What, how do you spell it? N I J M E G E N. It doesn't matter. Except they're that far north. People you should have you guys watched Rome on right. Netflix? It's right. really good. It's very good. Nimekin. 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 Okay. All right, stop. Megan. You're going to go into your computer and repeat. Nye Megan. Nye Megan. Okay. Archaeologists excavating, uh, excavating a site of comprehensive housing and green space development in Nye Megan. Winkelsteg, I can say that. One of the oldest cities in the Netherlands have uncovered a magnificent Roman blue gas bowl in immaculate condition. Wait till you see this picture in the show notes. I mean, this thing looks like it could be a target. Like, I, I mean, if I saw it at Target... I might think, well, somebody might have uh, nicked it up a bit, but I'd still think it was brand new. It is, it is astonishing. The glass bowl is at least 2,000 years old. There's not a chip or a crack on it. Wow. How, how awesome. See, why couldn't I have been an archaeologist? It's the original Tupperware. Yep, yeah, right. Yeah. And the archaeologist said the bowl was a Roman production, that it may have come from big places such as Cologne in Germany or Xanten. And that there were glass wa glass workshops there at the time. However, he also mentioned the possibility that it was made in Italy. Such dishes were uh, made by allowing molten glass to cool and har and a hardener over mold. The stripe pattern was drawn in with, when the glass mixture was still liquid. Metal oxide causes the blue color. I wondered what made it blue. Yeah. Um, the bowl was once a, a showpiece for the early nine residents. <laughs> <laughs> It's a masterpiece that deserves to be displayed in a museum. I've seen glassware in Italian museums. It should be in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> the name, but that, that, that. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, th this city, Namagan. 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 was founded as a Roman military camp 
in the first century BC in a civilian settlement of the local Bat- Batavi peoples formed next to it. By the year 98, the settlement was the first city and is what is today the Netherlands to receive de- uh, designation of uh, Roman city rights, making its citizens Roman. Rome had spread that far. If you're a super history nerd, watch Rome on Netflix because it goes through, it's just fantastic. Um, it's, it's boring if you're not a history person. It's, it's me geeking out. But um, they've also uncovered Roman settlement tombs as well as a smattering of grave goods and such numerous vessels, cups, and jewelry. The remains of the dwellings are few, mostly traces of wood construction. Aww. But archaeologists are recording residues and soil discoloration to create a map of the neighborhood structures. How great is that? This bowl is amazing. Yeah. It makes you want to go just dig in your backyard, see what you can find. You should. The cats in the park. The ca- I would just, maybe Civil War things, Indian things. That's all I would find. More My dad used to tell me that if I dug a hole deep enough, I would get to China, and yeah, I believe that. Dead. I know, and I believed it. I thought there might be Chinese kids that wanted to play. I was excited. <laughs> I did. Like when, I don't know, when my brothers or nobody wanted to play what I wanted to play. Like nobody wants to play catch right now. Maybe those kids from China won't play catch. Well. Yep. This, this, yeah. That's great. There's another holy shit. They found it. Lost sphinxes of Egyptian king Amenhotep. I already asked how you say that. Nice. Yeah. The third unearthed at Luxor. Ooh. Yeah, you should see these things. If the world wasn't always so bizarre, I would want to go. Archaeologists in Egypt recently d- rediscovered two sphinxes that guarded the mortuary temple of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, the grandfather of who? King Tut! Wow. It's his grandpa. Nice. Despite 3,400 years of weathering, the sphinxes still bear the carved limestone face of the Pharaoh who is adorned with a royal headdress and beard. A pair of, the pair of eight-meter-long sphinxes flank the entrance to a uh, processional avenue, which celebrants would have followed from the main part of the temple to a columned courtyard. Um, we're going to put the um, thing in here if you want to read more because it's super geeky, but it's awesome. Cool. Yeah, because the area got flooded, and then everything got worn down, and then it would get covered up again. And the fact that they're just still finding... Like giant sphinxes is crazy. Like I would worry about everything in Egypt. I'm like, be careful. You don't know what we're standing on. Like, (laughs) stop it. Stop digging if you don't know what you're doing. Stop digging. Jesus to children. Yeah, I would say it to the children. (laughs) I don't see what time. So many things this week. So many things. Oh my God! This is the greatest story of the week. Count on the Irish to save the world. So the Russian, I don't even need to read all this. I can just tell you by heart. The Russian uh, military decided they were going to do some military exercises uh, with submarines and ships off the western coast of Ireland, which history notables for you geeks out there, if you're standing on the, um, if you're standing in the city of Kinsale and go out to the point of Old Head, you can see where the Lusitania was sunk. Mm -hmm. So these waters have a history of coming and going of good things and bad things. And the the Russians were there, and they said, we're going to do our military exercises. And the, <laughs> a bunch of Irish fishermen were like, let's go shadow them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, if it was at the bar, I would have said, hey, now let's rethink this, guys. I would have stopped them. Yeah, I would have said, charge. listen, um, <laughs> Vladdy doesn't seem to be a jokester. Nope. Like, I think he's pretty serious. Mm-hmm. But they got their fishing boats. And they went out there, and then the head of the fisherman, something, 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 Patrick Murphy, contacted the Russian person and said, just so you know, we're going to be fishing out there like we always do. And it's a big area. I saw the outline, the, the borders of the boundaries of the, what is designated as the Irish fishing area. It's huge, and he shouldn't be there. And they went out and started fucking with him, wow. trolling. And I'm like, what were they doing? Like redneck things where you just start going around somebody and creating a giant wake, and then nobody right. can stand, right? They... Kept up their fishing. I don't know if they were taunting them. I don't know exactly what they did, but the Russians have moved hundreds of miles of way away. No way. Victory wow. to the Irish. Yeah, and then there's this guy on CNN, Dooney. His name is Dooney. Dooney. He went to interview him, and <laughs> well, it's, we've we've lost enough men to the to the seas. 
don't need to be going out there with the danger of Russian military exercises. We're going to go out there in the boats. We're going to just tell them, you take your boats elsewhere. And they <laughs> fucking did. They, they, that is just the greatest. Because I, I can get my Irish up like that, but I would have said, guys, I don't know, man. Let's rethink this one. Maybe we should call somebody. Hmm? They had a whole plan to disrupt it. Um, the chief of the S- Irish South and West Fish Producers Organization, Patrick Murphy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I can't believe they did it. You gotta you gotta Google the video of the of the interview and those guys. We should be entitled to go fishing there, and if we're fishing there in these boats, these warships shouldn't be having war games. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. Murphy said an issue of real concern was that the fishing gear at the back of the boats would get tangled with the submarine. True. Those nets aren't cheap. No. Get the fuck out of here. Just get the fuck. What are you doing here? <laughs> God. Yeah. Don't you have enough water around Russia you can practice this shit? Don't <laughs> uh, and then the Russian uh, guy said that uh, while the Russian military can, within the law, carry out these exercises off our waters and in our economic zone, they are certainly unwelcome. And that has been communicated to the authorities. Um, I mean, that's what the Irish guy said. Yeah. Good for you. Good for the Irish. This is fantastic news. (laughs) But you guys better hurry if you want this gig. I would love this job. But I'm not 100% qualified. I don't know anything about plumbing. The United Kingdom's Peel Island, or Pile, P-I-E-L, is looking for a new king. Oh. Mm-hmm. Who's that well, you got to hear what you what involved to be a king or a queen. Okay. Mm-hmm. It involves running a pub, looking after the island, notable ruin and ruins for them in the castle from the 1300s. It also means a lot of vile isolation and being doused in beer. Wait till you hear. No, I can't do the plumbing. And I don't know enough about I'd have to bring my dad. I don't know how to fix up a castle from the 1300s. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great reality show. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure my dad would know. He's pretty all around construction, construction, uh, you know, psycho. He's really into it. Um, the Barrow Borough Council, a local government on the west coast of England, has started the process to find a lease holder for the ship in the pub on the tiny island that it says is popular with day tripping visitors now see this island sounds better than the one we talked about last week that one sounded a little more remote the one off scotland this one has daytime day trippers Mm -hmm. there's a pub is open here's the problem though that lease includes maintaining a toilet block and looking after the grounds of the island which includes a picturesque ruins of a castle built in the 1300s the job starts in april yeah, I don't know what a toilet block is. I don't know. Well, that's why I can't do it. Right. I don't even know what it is. That's where you start. The previous leaseholder, he quit in May. He quit. He bailed early in May 2021. Local volunteers uh, volunteered their time to do the painting and other maintenance. And a Peel Island Pub Company was set to run the site for a few months in 2021 in order to better understand the costs involved, the council said. Now it wants a suitably experienced operator, ideally on a 10-year lease. It's like a pump house. A, a, pl- a pump a house? Which has been constructed primarily to provide toilet facilities for the users. Of the well, my dad knows how to run a pump house. Yeah. He built his own pump yeah. house. There That's where go. the snake lives. Um, oh. Yeah, we just got to keep Jack going. You guys could do that. Well, he could do it. I don't know how to run a pump house. I don't won't even go in the pump house out on the farm because I, that snake lives in there. Right. And then you put up some picture of an Instagram page. Everybody because it's a nice snake. <laughs> not when it's over your head and it shocks you. No, um, <laughs> um, but running Peel Island comes with a couple of complications. The person in charge of the pub is traditionally crowned King of Peel. King in of a Peel. ceremony involving a rusty saber, which concludes with buckets of beer being poured over their head. I'm fine with that. Any other person who th- sits on the throne by mistake must buy drinks for everyone. Oh, I like that law. I like that too. Running the island will be long stretches of isolation, particularly during winter months when Peel is largely in hibernation. Yeah, but you can get a ferry back. Right. It's not like you're going to die out there. Mm-hmm. Local historians believe the island was first b- visited by the Celts, then by the Romans, in a history that spans 3,000 years. 
In 1919, the Duke of something tried to sell the island, but the mayor of Barrow intervened, and the island was ultimately handed to the town as a memorial to those who died in the First World War. Mm -hmm. Between April and September, a ferry ticket will take you to the island. where You can have a drink or meal at the inn. Campsites are also available. Wow. Yep. Cool. So, there was something else I was going to read to you about, though. It could be a queen. It doesn't have to be a dude. You probably have to be a citizen, though, I would think. Um, yeah. The pub is 300 years old. Oh, my God. Yep. That's cool. Yep. King or queen. It's 50 acres. The island is 50 acres. You think okay. you can handle it? Uh, no. No. You are crowned. By sitting, by having alcohol poured over their head while sitting in an ancient chair wearing a helmet and holding a sword. We can do that. I'm going to start doing that. Jump yeah. over the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, like you have to have sound local knowledge. I don't have that. Um, yeah. The, the pub is called the Ship Inn. That's, that's about all I can give you. This is a historic site, and this is a site of special honor. Visitors can ramble among castle ruins and stroll along the beach, but and there's uh, tons of uh, seals out there and stuff, but are asked to respect the built and natural environments. But camping outside the designated camping areas, open fires are not permitted. So, a little something there. If you're looking for a gig, are you bored? Hmm? You sitting in England going, I got to get the fuck out of here? I got your job. I got you. I got your job. Um, so quick note, very excited. Anita Baker, I was switching, I should have done this up front, who I really love and one time got to drink vodka and eat Fritos with on an airplane. Nice. Very fun. She's a hilarious person. A lot of people don't probably you think of her as the singer, which she's great. She's wonderful. Um, but she's also funny and yeah. smart. Very funny, though. Anyway, she announced that she's not quitting in a great way. Good. She's good. She took to Twitter on Wednesday to announce a new Las Vegas engagement in May. How oh, great is that? Right. Yep, because I rambled on down there and saw her. Great, great, great show. She sings all the hits, unlike some people I know that don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that was just a little news flash that I thought I should get out there in case you're a Anita Baker fan. Cool. Um, put an alert. Because her thing sold so fast. She sold out the Fox in St. Louis, which I think sees 4,500 people. Like five shows. It, she doesn't even do press. She doesn't even have to. No. It just sells out. Shows up. Yeah. So. Um, she was at the Venetian when I saw her. Maybe that's where she'd be again. No, Moving on. No. Was it the win? Yeah. I get those two confused down there. Um. <laughs> um you know how I'm fascinated with the Mexican drug lords. Mm -hmm. Fascinated. Doesn't mean I respect them. Doesn't mean I think they're good people. But you, people in this country think the mafia did crazy things. They did. Mm -hmm. And I watch all those mafia shows, too. I'm into that, too. But I, 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 I've watched so many because my dad would make, make us watch from growing up. I don't mm -hmm. know what he thought we were going to become. <laughs> but, I mean, Sammy the Bull, Gravana. I, I can't. I already know. I got all that. This is new. Mexican cartel assassin cuts out and eats the heart of a rival gang member in a horror warning. What? Yep, oh and he posted God. it. <gasps> a gruesome video has emerged online of a Mexican cartel assassin, uh, assassin butchering and cannibalizing a rival gang member as a horrific warning to enemy cartel cronies. Oh. Now, before I even read this, Google Mexican journalists assassinated. They're starting to assassinate all the journalists. And, like, there's this one really pretty lady, and I don't need to have to say she's pretty. It's just noticeable. She's extremely pretty. And she is, she, her ass was like, I'm chasing these motherfuckers, and I'm not letting up. And I thought, you're insane. And I believe she's the one that got murdered last week. I'm not 100% uh, sure. A woman did. Not sure it was her. You can't even report on them, or they will come. And they're not kidding. Like, this isn't we'll wear a bulletproof vest. That's not enough for a bomb in your car. Right. What are you going to do? Walk around in a, in a literally a, a suit of armor from Peel <laughs> Island? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't do it. I admire the ones that try, but oh, no, no, no. Nope. A Mexican cartel assassin, Bush and one of his rivals, cut out his heart and took bites from it 
as a warning to other gang members. It is understood that the mutilated corpse in the video belongs to a gunman working for the uh, the cartel whose former leader, Joaquin, Joaquin. Acavaldo Guzman Laura, otherwise known as El Chapo, <laughs> is serving a life sentence. So this guy is working for El Chapo, well, currently El Chapo's sons. They've taken over that. The description on the video on the blog border, border, borderlandbeat.com reads, a new video from the Mexican underworld has just surfaced online. From this broadcast, a fallen Mayo Zambada gunman lies dead on the ground next to other deceased individuals. Ooh. And then there's a picture. I didn't watch the video. I can't watch that. Deep cavity wounds have been made across his torso. A large fixed blade oh. knife is suspected of been using several, removing several body parts. The shadow of a person swinging away to dismember the corpse off camera can be seen on the left side. Oh. The hitting, dis- the hitman dismembering the body is thought to be a member of the new Elisco New Generation Cartel or CNG, CJNG, whose leader Namiso Cervantes, commonly n- known by his alias El Mencho is the most wanted man in Mexico. Yep. No sound accompanies the film, just a message across the screen that warns of the fate of every Mayo Zambato operative who is caught. So now it's El Mayo. El Mayo. El Mayo against El Chapo's, who's ever running El Chapo's sons, I think. They're not very smart. Well, who's, who's, what's El Mencho running then? Wait a second. The hitman dismembering the body is a thought to be a member of the new uh, Yalisco New Generation Cartel. Oh, El Mencho's the leader of the the Yalisco, so it's El Mencho's people against. Uh, yeah, wow. you, you gotta. We're gonna have to see why isn't this is where Narcos needs to catch up. Yes. Come on, Narcos, we put the pedal on. to the metal. <laughs> we moved. Yeah, we already we did the we did Pablo, we did El Chapo, we need El Mencho and the, the rest of these generation. people. All right. This this is crazy to me. Harry and Meghan. Ugh. I know. I I've never seen two people with uh, uh, fewer skills go so far. I know. What are your discernible skills? Meghan Markle acting? Eh, not really. No. Suits in a game show where you hold a suitcase? No. Harry? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, I think he can fly a helicopter. Right. That would be fine in California. Maybe he could be part of search and rescue. Right. Put him to use. Do something. Do something. It's not grand Do enough. a job. Mm-hmm. It's not grand enough for him. Um, after, this is amazing. After Prince Harry and Meghan Markle left the royal family, they've been signing deals, opening charities, business ventures, one after the other. You mark my words till she'll make him move back down to L.A. because uh, Montecito's too boring. Ron had a house there. It's beautiful, but it's boring as shit. You gotta bring your own place. Like, yeah, I would go up there and to golf with Ron, and he had a, his house wasn't even fancy. It was, it had a good view. It was nice. Mm -hmm. Um, And we would sit on the deck and drink wine, but then I'm like, now, now what are we doing? You gotta bring your own fun. You gotta bring your own fun. Well, he's fun, but Mm -hmm. we had fun, but you can't live, I mean, to live there? No. No. Um, uh, (sighs) So, Spotify. Paid Hagen, Megan, and Harry eighteen million dollars. That was in two thousand nineteen. I remember that. So far, they have submitted thirty three minutes of material. Wow! wow. <laughs> Suckers. Yeah. Um, so Spotify announced that it's going to take over the project because seemingly <laughs> these two aren't going to do nothing, and you can only blame so much on COVID. I mean, I'm a procrastinator, so I love the COVID thing where I'll be like, Kathleen, you know, you're supposed to get these receipts for the homeowners thing. Yeah, COVID, you know, (laughs) nobody's working. Like, for little shit, it's funny and it's fine. But you can't. 33 minutes. I have submitted 75 hours for nothing. (laughs) They should have called me. They'd have got more bag out of their buck out of of this lady sitting here eating gummy bears and drinking beers from all over the world. Eating gross Twix. Uh, she, uh, she's afraid of their safety. 
Fuck. It's really Spotify that's going to kill them. <laughs> 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 um, they expect, they were supposed to have their homework in. Uh, the first completed series was supposed to be finished by 2021. And then Netflix gave them a chunk load of cash, too, like $100 million. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, you know how much Netflix gave me for my special? The exact amount it cost to make it. Wow. Yep. I thought it was beautiful. Well, I don't ever bitch because I know other people are getting millions of dollars. I, I don't even, I don't merit that. I think I merit it a little bit more than I got. But I'm also not a fighter. What do you want? As long as it's going to be funny and it's a good commercial. I just, me and Lewis we view all those things, specials and all that stuff as just a fun thing that's like an ad to sell tickets. Because really, I just want to go on the road and tell jokes. But I need people to show up to do that. So whatever. <laughs> Um, wow. the Netflix thing, uh, Spotify has been waiting a long time for some content from Megan, Megan and Harry. Well, what are they going to talk about? Right. Living in Montecito, how boring it is. Right. I could help them talk about it. I could give them a lot of subjects. I have extra, I have extra stories every week. Maybe I should contact them. <laughs> exactly. Spotify is taking matters into their own hands. Yeah. They, they just don't have any content. I don't have the, I'm going to research the Netflix one because I can't, I cannot, see how, see, just Google how much did Netflix pay um, Megan and Harry. Everybody in LA jumps on it. Oh my God, they're going to move here. Oh my God, they're the Duke and Duchess. Let's just, we got to grab them. We got to do it. And then they think, what, what did you think they were going to do? It was about 100 million. 100 million. That's what I thought. Yeah. And there, there's nothing. This is where people in charge um, should be fired. Mm -hmm. You bet on the horse <laughs> that don't even run. Totally. Not even is it not going to produce anything. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for them. I just think we should get ahead of this one because I wondered what this was going to be like. Um, entering Beijing's Olympic bubble is, surre is a surreal experience. I actually said to, I was talking to my mom, I said, would you go to, would you go to the Olympics? She goes, of course not. Your father won't eat Chinese food. I said, that's <laughs> not what I meant. I know. My dad is, is 80. He's never had Chinese food. He's never had Mexican food. What? Nope. He's never had a taco. Never, no, and don't even talk about Thai or anything outside of that. No. No, no he's never had a taco. One time we were in a, in, a, in a hotel lobby and I ordered a quesadilla. He goes, is that all they have? I go, no, they have all kinds of things. Well, then why'd you get it? I said, because I wanted it. No, he is a meat and potato, old school, roast beef, mashed potatoes, and peas. The furthest he'll go is Italian. Uh, <laughs> Italian, and it's got to be normal, quote, normal, meaning spaghetti and meatballs, lasagna. Chef <laughs> no, he likes my mom's. He won't go Chef Boyardee, although he'd probably eat that and not know. But when I said, would you go to the Olympics, I well, meant because of all the... Um, the, the restrictions that are in place, I didn't mean because dad won't eat for two weeks. So this is what happens if you go. Because I wondered, what about the journalists? What about, now if you're young and you've waited your whole life to get to the Olympics, you're probably just going to go and say whatever. But boy, I at this age, I would just say, uh-uh, I ain't doing it. Life's too short for me to be in this situation. Olympics. Uh, China's strict pandemic measures are creating a surreal and at times, anxious experience. This is what's going to happen if you're going. Journalist, athlete, whatever. China is isolating everyone coming in from abroad from any contact with the general public for the duration of the games. Oh, wow. Yep. Which open next week. So you're not even going to get to experience China. China. Yeah. Nope. That means being taken from the Beijing airport in special vehicles to a hotel surrounded by temporary bar barricades that keep participants in and the public out. Oh, wow. I only know the experience of Beijing. I'm going, I only know the experience of Beijing. I'm going to experience is the Beijing I will see out of my bus window in my hotel room, said Associated Press photo editor, somebody, I can't say his name, who arrived this week. I'm not really going to experience China. I'm just going to experience the Olympics within the bubble. The experiences of AP journalists who have arrived or are preparing to depart offers a glimpse into the life inside the bubble. Photographer uh, photographer Jay Hong said he had been in, warned about the bubble, but seeing it in effect was still a shock. He described seeing passengers met by workers in white, full-body protective gear 
Everyone is tested for COVID at the airport before being transported to their barricaded hotels. The entrances protected by round the clock guards. Oh my God. Organizers want to keep any infections from getting out of the bubble as well as spreading within the bubble. It's gonna, yeah. you know it. Cause somebody's going to land and that test might say negative at the time. Right. But then they will be positive. And then you're going to have to stay there. Then you have to stay there. God. Yeah. But hold on. Um, everyone is tested daily. Failing to get tested the previous evening means being stuck in your hotel the next day. So far, organizers said Thursday that there have been 129 positive tests among the um, journalists or team officials. The rest are participants such as uh, media, etc. Those who are tested positive are taken to a hospital oh if they have symptoms or a quarantined hotel if they do not. Uh-huh. Jail. Jail. Yeah. yeah. Even maybe they they should have. Oh, Even getting to China can be worrying, requiring multiple negative COVID nineteen tests to enter into an app that displays your health status. That kept Arthur on edge during her journey from New Delhi to Beijing via Tokyo. A colleague who had already helped arrive in Beijing helped her download the app. Then when she saw the health workers in biohazard suits after she got off the plane in the airport, it's a bit scary. It's almost like a hospital that was treating COVID patients in the second wave, she said, referring to, uh, referring to India's devastating uh, wave in March. Tokyo also set strict rules for the Summer Olympics, but participants were al al outside. They were allowed outside of the bubble after two weeks. Wow. Outside of the bubble, Beijing authorities have locked down more neighborhoods in the city's Fengtai district on Thursday as they try to snuff out the Delta variant breakout. Da, 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 da. They have a zero tolerance policy. Wow. 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 Yeah, this is not the place I, to go. I know, but what are you going to do? You worked your whole life if you're one of the athletes. Would you rather be in a jail rather than testing positive? Oh, would I no. rather be in a Chinese jail? No. Depends on how much my chance of winning gold is. If I win gold, there's a good lot, a chance I could be super rich. I mean, it depends on what sport. Sadly, like no one. No. The gold in curling in America, you don't get a Wheaties box. You do in Canada. Yeah. But not in America. Canadians love curling. Well, I have another thing before we go. <laughs> before we go. No, maybe I'm going to save this do one. No, don't. McDonald's is adding some of their secret menus, oh, menu yeah. items to their regular menu, including a Big Mac plus fish, a fish sandwich, plus a chicken sandwich called the Land, Air, and Sea. So people oh, started doing yeah. this on TikTok, just yeah. combining things, and now you can order them. But what's really crazy is, like, you can't call this creating a new sandwich. It's just piling. You're just <laughs> piling things. You go, But I guess it might be cheaper if you buy the one instead of buying them individually and going, look what I did. And I could totally see one of my nephews doing this on TikTok yeah. just so they can go, watch me eat it. Right. And then they would do it and they think it's hilarious so and then their friends would do it. It's fish and a burger? Well, oh. the one, the land, air, and sea is a Big Mac, fish, and chicken. Yeah, no. Gross. And they oh. use hash browns as a bun. How does that even stay together? Wow. Gross. <laughs> This just sounds like teenage boys With going, lard. watch this shit. And they think it's hilarious. Yeah. And then they have a very serious picture of Ronald McDonald in this article. It's terrifying. And then I think, that, yeah. Okay. Here are the four sandwiches you can get. Hash brown McMuffin. In a breakfast only exclusive, this order combines a sausage, McMuffin, hash browns, and a hash brown for extra crunch. You can get a crunchy double, six pieces of chicken McNuggets, inserting them into a double cheeseburger. People have lost their minds. What are you doing? I would try that. Gross. Yeah. Land you have, if you have to try one, then that's what you have to do. And I would make it the egg McMuffin instead of the sausage. Land, air, and sea. This sandwich combines, we already talked about that, chicken, Big Mac, uh, filet of fish. Surf and turf. This puts together a double cheeseburger and a filet of fish and is only available on the app or through delivery. That's awful. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Just because the children on TikTok do things doesn't mean you have to actually act upon that. <laughs> Just let them do their thing. Let them make their own and keep charging them more. We're going to go through the drive through and see if it's real. I don't know. <laughs> you know what else I thought? Um, Lewis, a long time ago, uh, put me, he bought me the magazine The Week. Mm -hmm. And if you, I never even saw it. I didn't even know what it was. But I saw it in an airport once and I bought it. And it's good. It because. It's hard, but I like that it goes 
outside the United States. It does, it does United States stuff. But it goes all around the world. And then it has top 10 books, top 10 movies. It's, it's fun. Yeah. But he sent me a subscription. And he renews it every year, which is adorable. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm always behind, though. By the time I get back from the road and I get the week, that week's way over. But there's still stuff in the magazine I like. And they have a quote page. And I've decided I'm going to end for the termites a quote, maybe no. one or two. <laughs> yep. Mrs. Rogers. <laughs> yep. A nice quote. And we should use this man's because he just passed away. Yeah. Sidney Poitier. I like this. Yeah. Here's a quote from him. It's called The Column's Wit and Wisdom. You don't have to become something. You're not to be better than you were. Finally, a guy on my page. I like that. Yeah, yeah, throw your vision board out. Yeah. Stop. Let's not get to the next level. No. Let's stay right where you're at. Mm -hmm. If you're having fun. Right. If you're happy. I assume you, that's what Oprah lost her goddamn mind. Have you set new goals? Do you have new goals? <laughs> Where's your vision board? I'm very content. If you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it. Become the king of Peel Island. Here's another one I like. Um. Uh, I'm afraid of losing my obscurity. Geniusness only thrives in the dark, like celery. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Aldous Huxley quoted in Goodreads.com. So think about those things, Termites. If Sidney Poitier says you don't have to become something to be a better version of yourself, you don't have to. You don't have to. No. I think he knew everything. All right, Termites, that's all. I have to go... Um, Meet Lewis in Florida. Nice. Well, I haven't seen him in a long time because he's very COVID careful, but he's back out on the road. You're I'm very COVID careful, but I actually have to um, make a lot more money than Lewis. Um, Lewis has saved a lot more because he's an older turtle, mm -hmm. and I need to, to get out there quicker um, and do my thing. But we're going to go meet Lewis. And in his little tour bus, where he is safe, and um, we're going to golf. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really shitty. Mm -hmm. It's shitty in the Midwest. It's shitty in, the weather's shitty in Tennessee. It's, mm -hmm. my little spots are just, um, it's fucking cold. Yeah. It was eight in Missouri. Eight? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You can't golf in eight? No. No. So, we're not going to do that. And, um. You're going to watch Ozark. I'll take some pictures can't wait to see his golf swing it's been months i'm sure it'll just be a train wreck of proportions that one can't even fathom but he always sorted out by like the fourth hole i got it i got it kath i got it i got it okay all right termites that's it be good termites it's hard in the winter to not be all my friends in new england sorry i hope you i texted my friend kelly mcfarland but she was down doing a comedy club in key west and she left um um Eric at home, he had to, Papa Otter had to figure it out himself. <laughs> she does a really funny joke about how they sit in their respective recliners and she calls it ottering. When they <laughs> but anyway, so all my New England friends, I hope you've dug out. I hope your power's back on. Um, I was watching the Weather Channel and Jim Cantori was in his glory. Yeah. He loves it. He's like goggles, the whole thing. Couldn't even see his face. And then they're like, Jim, we have some footage of you when you were in a, in a blizzard this size in 2014. And they showed that. I'm like, okay, we don't need, this isn't football. We don't need to go show a different game that was eight years ago. All right, termites. Next on the road coming up is uh, Durham and Charlotte. And I think Durham is already sold out. And guess what happens in Durham if you sell a show out? You get a trophy. <gasps> the bull. The Durham bull. Nice. And nobody else gives you a trophy. And as an adult, and I make a fine living, you can't believe how excited I still get over a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last time, though, I flew it home. It's horns broke and all that stuff. Yeah, but they sent me, they sent me in. I said, I can glue it. They're like, no, I'm going to send you another one. And Charlotte. And that means North Carolina barbecue. And that means Kelly McFarland will be on the road with me wow. for those gigs. Um, yeah. So that'll be super fun. And then after that, I don't remember. I have to look. Okay. I lose track. I don't know. It was supposed to be Denver, but we moved that to June 4th. Mm -hmm. 
because we can't tape a special because of the COVID. It's just too complicated and too many people, or, you know, insurance. And but I'd rather just do it when it's fun and normal and we don't have to worry about these things. And I'm hoping June 4th, by that time, I'm hoping no one will be arguing or fighting and we'll all be healthy. St. Louis is March 5th. Oh, my God, St. Louis, March 5th. Yeah, hometown gig. Yeah. Charlottesville and and Virginia Beach. I haven't been to either one of those in so so long. I'm, Augusta, I'm excited. And then Augusta, Georgia. And Charleston. Charleston. Yeah. yeah. And then I don't remember a lot of southern. A lot Atlanta. Of, mm-hmm. Yeah, Atlanta. You'll be warm for a while. A lot of southeastern gigs. Yeah, but some of those places, Atlanta was cold as shit too. Oh, I know. I you almost have to go down to like Tampa or South to right. get heat, right. really. Because I said that my parents a long time ago. Why don't, why don't you move to the Panhandle? We can find someone on the Redneck Riviera. No, no, too cold in the winter. Too cold. And they were right. Yeah. yeah. All right, termites. Be good termites. Be, um, try to be happy termites, even though the weather's terrible. And it's yeah. kind of, we're all getting a little stir crazy. Watch Ozark. Watch Ozark. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still enjoying Hell on Wheels. I know I'm years behind. I don't know how I missed it. But I do like it. Me and my mom, though, hate that there's this girl who does the uh, voiceover. She's the hot 20-something. And she's totally doing a southern accent. That she's just, I Googled she's not from the south. I'm like, she's mimicking an accent she's heard. But Tim McGraw is so good, and Faith Hill is so good, and Sam Neill is so good. I can, when she's going to start doing voiceover, I just hit mute. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott, that's what I meant. 1883. 1883 is the other one. I just knew by the northern winds and the Yankees coming our <laughs> way that the Indians might overtake everything and I would wake up with an arrow in my eyeball. She didn't say that. I made that part up. All right, termites. That's it. Night-night termites. Night-night termites.